So electronic thermostat part two would be the title of this video. We watched the part one together, at least parts of part one. I don't know if all of you saw it. Will, you didn't see all of it. But in part one, what we're dealing with, without going back through the wiring diagram and everything we did in part one, I drew a generic picture at this point. In part one, this is what we're dealing with. It's a ground side switched output control device, right? Uh, the thermostat is heated by a electric heater piece. And I drew the circuit like this, externally powered, internally grounded question so far. In the part one video, what we saw when we were looking at the car on the control wire here with our scope connected, this would be a voltage trace, we saw a pattern that was high and had these small spikes in it like this as it was being turned on and off. And when I commanded the computer to increase the duty cycle, we saw that same pattern do this and get wider at the bottom. Any questions on that part? It's ground side switched, low voltage is on, high voltage is off. This is my off period, this is my on period. What we saw, which identified an open in this device, was during the off periods, we were seeing low voltage in this area. So if we follow section three material, when we have a ground side switch circuit that is low voltage with the control circuit off, and we can follow that flow chart that I've listed in there, okay? There's some variables to that that could cause that. Low voltage would be the circuit being turned on would be one of them, correct? If we turn the circuit on, voltage is going to drop. And we said in part one, in this part one video that it was not, this was not even a concern. And the reason why we had an amp probe on here as well. And we were measuring current flow. And during this event with low voltage, we knew with the amp probe connected that we didn't have a circuit that was being turned on because we had no current flow. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, uh, my suggestion would be to go through the section three material that we have. I don't wanna cover all the variables of low voltage right now with this part two video. I really wanna focus on how this thing works, how it's controlled. Um, I will give you this much. If we were to have either a short to ground on the control wire, or a driver issue that was grounding the circuit, would you all agree with me that we would have current that would pass through this and either go that way or that way? The answer is yes. I would have seen that on my amp probe and we did not in the part one video. So this low voltage during the off period can only be from an open, not a short. Open feed, open coil. This is what we did to troubleshoot it. It was an open in this heater circuit. So we have the new part installed. Let me show that to you. And by the way, this was done at the dealer. This car was still under warranty. Unfortunately, they wouldn't give me the old part. I wanted to show what that looked like. But when they service these components, it's kind of hard for you guys to see that. Let me point out a couple of pieces to on this. The thermostat is actually right in here, right where my finger is. The heater part is right here. This uh, electrical plug, let me move this top one out of the way, if I can. This is your connector for your heater. And the entire thermostat housing, which is this black plastic, this all gets changed together. It's one piece. So this electric piece that's part of the thermostat is not serviced separate. I think that's important to to know going into one like this. I was hoping they'd give me the old part, but they did not. And then I have a sensor on the back side back here, which I pointed out in the, in the part one video that this is my coolant temp sensor back here, and this is my electric heater. They're both two wires, so how would you know which one's a coolant sensor, which one's a heater circuit, really was the wiring diagram that told us, based on wire color, which one was which. One's an input, one's an output. We're on the output side. So to retake these shots that I did in part one, I need to be on the control wire of this. It's ground side switched. 
And without pulling the wiring diagram back up, we can actually make that determination. Do you guys remember how? Of these two wires that we're looking at here, how do I know which one my control wire is? Because what I want to do, connect back up to this, show you the voltage trace, show you the current trace while I'm commanding it to turn on and off. Primarily the current pattern is really what I'm going after here for this part two video to know what normal current flow is on this circuit. It's what I want to show you. But to start this process, I need to be on the control wire voltage. And I'm just seeing if you guys remember how we can do that as a review. It'll make sense when I show it to you. I was just hoping for some uh, feedback from you guys, but that's okay. Dan, yes, sir. You back it now? Yes, I am back probing it with a voltage trace. So my black lead, I just connected to a known good ground off the screen here. I'm right on the battery and my positive lead, I'm going to back probe this device and I want the key on. Is my key on on this? Yeah. yeah. All right, now give me a second to set the scope up. Right. Yeah. What is the actual purpose of them to go to a electronic thermostat versus a regular temperature type? That is a great question, Dave. I as far as the purpose of this thermostat, the only thing that I was able to come up with, which is talking to a friend of mine at GM, I called actually a GM tech and was talking to him about it. And what he told me in short was better control during the warm up phase so we can reduce really pollutants is what it's about. Um, the analogy that he gave me would be, let's say take a 10 degree day outside and you're driving down the highway, the radiator temperature's 10 degrees, the blocks finally warmed up to a point where the thermostat would open, you're gonna get this big rush of very, very cold coolant into the engine, and we're gonna alter that fuel curve again to uh, match what our engine temperature is, where if we can open the stat sooner, we can start to blend in that cold 10 degree coolant into that engine and not have these sudden surges in temperature. So that's one reason. So we don't have these big kind of humps as the car is warming up. It's more of a smooth change overall. So that's one. Uh, another one behind that would be, uh, I'm really not sure other than to shorten it and say it is really all about the warm up period and being, to be being able to better be able to control or monitor that and, and, and get into closed loop mode faster. I don't know if that's, that's, that's yeah, I, I, that's as good as I could get, Dave. Uh, I'm, to, I'm not 100% on. That's similar to heated O2. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, the thing with this heated thermostat, what we know for sure with research is it has the ability to open it sooner than what the coolant temperature normally would. So that's one thing we could definitely fall back on is that it will, it has the ability, this system has the ability to open sooner than a normal thermostat would. So why would we want to open one sooner? Again, it has to do with a more even uniform warm up period and not big sudden surges, changes in temperature. I, I think that's pretty decent. It's pollutant control. That's primarily, that's it. Okay, so, um, just give me a second to set everything back up. All right, as far as, as far as the control goes, you guys see the pulsing on this one? And we didn't on the other one, so which one's my control side? It's this one. Here's your feed side, look at it. What do we have? Steady 12, right? Go back to the other wire. What do we see? Yeah, and I'm, I'm having some T-pin issues here too. Um, that is definitely my control. Uh, do you guys remember if there wasn't activity on that, how we could figure out which one the control is? What would we do? We would see 12 and 12. Unplug it. One side's going to drop. The other side will stay high. Very good. That's how we identify it. All right. So from here, that is my control. The next thing I'm going to do is put my amp probe on here. 
All right, so I had uh, two exposed wires from last time that we pulled some of the conduit away, which is right here. And so again, for amperage guys, when you're doing amperage measurements, it does not matter where you go. Either wire, setting this to a 20. So now we'll look at amperage. Now we'll look at amperage and voltage at the same time. My scope, I have to turn on another channel. I need to tell it what I'm using, which is my amp probe set in the 20 amp setting. Now we have amperage and current we can look at at the same time. And I want my digital signal up there. And what's this message here on the scan tool, guys? What do I have to do? Turn the key off. So current flow, on, on the old design, the one that had the malfunctioning heater, at, at most we had was 300 to 400 milliamps on this green trace. So watch it for me um, and look at your min max, okay, right here. Hang on. This is being touchy, right? Right in this area, right? Right in here, see where the max? If I touch that, it's going to change. See my numbers, it says 0.1 in green. I want you guys to watch that number as I increase this. We're gonna see the yellow trace change, so hit start. The yellow trace is going to get fatter at the bottom and we'll see amperage rise on the green trace. Let's get that up out of the way. There's 10. And what I'm doing wrong is my amp probe is backwards. See the amperage going upside down? So let me go back to zero and, and return this so it doesn't kick me out. So how do we do that? I can invert it or I can take the probe and turn it around. It's easy, easier to just invert that green trace. Looks like 0.8, we had about 800 milliamps on that. Let's try it again and we'll take this all the way up. I'm actually surprised that it's not higher amperage than, than this. But there's an increase in the on time pulse width or duty cycle. And we'll freeze that, return that, open the scope back up and take a look at that line. And this will be for you guys that are testing this in the field later, you're going to want these numbers and yeah, that line at the top, like right up in here, that's about 800 milliamps, where the old one was 300. Any questions on, on this part and the change in the pulse width or duty cycle? Anything? It's pretty straightforward. I think the nice thing about something like this is when you when you study ground side switching duty cycle pulse width all of that it actually becomes very easy to troubleshoot a component that you might be completely unfamiliar with so. Jim you have a question no. you sure yeah. like you said it was pretty straightforward yeah I mean that's the cool it is the cool thing about it. I, I, I was surprised. I mean, actually, I shouldn't say I was surprised, but whenever we, whenever we encountered this, I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's something I'm not familiar with. And, you know, should I do this together with my class or not? And it was actually great that we did because it was exactly section three material. You know, we were talking about solenoids and transistor drivers. Yeah, this isn't a solenoid, but is this exactly the same information that I have in section three? Exactly. When you're in the field, you start doing these, these uh, procedures on these cars, you're going to need that. And, and primarily, it's going to be 
How did you know that there was not a short? How do you know there's an open? How do you know the computer's not functioning? How do you know the solenoid's open or the component is open? That's where the difficulty is going to lie. And that's why I writ wrote the book the way I did, which is that is your field manual to take with you. And when you come down, when it comes down to that, you'll be good. I have an answer to question. Yeah. Um, when did they start incorporating the computers inside the, the vehicle? Like? When did they start computers? Yeah. 79, 78 is when they changed from a point type system to a electronic ignition. That, that would be the first quote computer is that little HEI ignition module that GM used. Um, I, they've had computers before that, but, and then in the eighties we went feedback carburetors and you know, the computers were pretty, pretty involved with our carbureted systems, you know, in the eighties and those were horrible. Those were horrible. What Jeff. HEI is high energy ignition, it's just a name. It's just like, it's the same kind of question like tune port, what's tune port injection? Huh? It's just a name. You know, they're all tuned in a certain, you know, yeah, it's just a name, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, the theory behind the HEI coil was it was, to, it was supposed to produce more than conventional coils, but I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not the engineer. Any other questions? Electronic thermostat. I'm, I'm surprised it's only 800 milliamps. I thought it would be higher than that. Uh, this would be something though that we would want to know if we're using a test light to check it, which you could use a test light to check controls. Did I show that in the part one? The test light control of this? Do you guys remember? But did I show the test light method of checking this circuit? I think so, you're talking about frying the computer if you did it wrong. I don't remember if I showed it or not. Jeff? Did you say you're surprised that it's only 800 milliamps? Does that mean there's no standard for those? Well, no, no standard. You have to keep in mind this is the first time I've ever worked on one. So this is the first electronic thermostat I've ever tested. Any standard that would be out there, I'm not, av I'm not aware of it yet. Make sense? Yeah. All right, if, if this... If this thing was completely open, and I don't think I showed this, uh, I know I've talked about it. If, if the solenoid's completely open, is there any way that I can look at this pattern on the screen and know that the computer's able to control it? There's not. You guys remember our first day in the shop, I had us all go through with our test light, scan tool, command things on, make the test light light. Don't you think we can do the same thing with this thermostat? If I just keep you focused on the on the car now for a second. You guys have seen what I did with the scan tool. Maybe when I edit this, I'll do a split screen and show the scan tool at the same time I'm, I'm showing this. But I just want to basically simulate a completely open in one of these circuits and check the control. And I've, I have the control circuit identified, and we said it's what? Ground side switched, right? We can, we're just going after a test light here. I'm just going to leave that T-pin right where it is, or that back probing pin. I'm, I'm taking my test light to battery positive. And when my test light finds a ground, I'll just touch the thermostat housing. It should light. That thermostat housing will not light because it's bolted to plastic. That's a good lesson there on something metal. How about the side of the block? All right, there we go, right? Test light lights when I find a ground. So take my test light on this T-pin. Am I safe to do that? How do I know that I'm safe to use my test light on this circuit, guys? Are all test light, I just have it resting there. It's contacting that pin is are all test lights are all test lights safe in, in doing this no. no they're not and i don't want you guys to have this perspective that you can take any test light and check an output what's the maximum current we saw on this output 800 milliamps i know my test light bulb is 200 milliamps am i okay with my test light yes so anytime we're using a test light to control outputs you need to know what your test light draws. You need to know what your test light draws and you need to know, have an idea of what the output is that you're turning on and off. Now I expect this light to be dim and then get bright. In fact, it's behind my amp probe there, right? 
Hang on. A little bit better. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to hit start on the scan tool. And it is flickering too, that's cool. That's at 100% right now. I, I had it all the way up at 100. As I go down in my duty cycle, you can see that we see more distinct on off with that. How is my computer? If you had one of these cars come in and there was no way you could check the control circuit, in other words, that device was open, you wouldn't be able to check the control without some type of test light. 2012, I like that. 2012, what is this thing? Chevy Cruze. Chevy Cruze, 2012 vehicle that we're applying uh, technology or a, a tool that, that we've used since the 80s. And, and again, people say don't use a test light on a computer controlled circuit, would not know what they're talking about. This is absolutely the way that you would check the control circuit and the computer itself. Let me, give, let me give you one more hypothetical. All right, so I'm gonna draw back on this screen. This is the stuff we have in section three. I want you guys to remember this is there. What do you do on a circuit like this if you read on the control wire? This is my control. Can't see that, huh? Let's go red. This is control. If we read zero volts here all the time, what's your next step? All the time. We have a trouble code for an electronic thermostat. We see zero volts on that control wire. Just on that side, starting right. That's the only one, only measurement I made so far. We need to check both wires, right? That's the other one. Come over here. What if we read zero over here? Stop what you're doing. You're missing a power feed. Fix your power feed problem. Make sense? Once you've identified your feed circuit is good, now what do we do? We have zero here all the time. Let, before we uh, go through the testing process, tell me, this is a review for you guys, tell me what our causes are. Because these are things you'll have, 2012 unknown system, these are, these are things you will have in your mind as you're troubleshooting with, with um, experience, okay? Open in what wire? Okay, open control would be one. I agree, somebody said power wire, but we checked that. That's why we would jump over and check that side. So an open... I thought you made it zero. Well, you're right. An open feed would be one, but we've already verified that, so we'll cross that off the list. Short to ground where? Is that the computer? All right, a sorted, a sorted driver. Meaning what? Sorted driver meaning what? That driver's closed the ground, current flow all the time. Wouldn't that cause all of our voltage to drop here and we'd have zero all the time? The answer is yes. What else? Too high a resistance would have to be, you're right, but it would have to be so high to see zero here, it would have to be so high to be an open in the coil. An open coil is absolutely one of them. One more. A switch stuck closed. That, a switch stuck closed, exactly. That would be my sorted driver. My driver is the switch. So I have this drawn as a switch. It's really not a switch, it's a transistor. Switch stuck closed. Switch stuck open would not be one because what we would have here is what? 12. We would have 12 all the time. See, you guys are getting this. this is, these are fundamentals you apply to everything that we do. I like that. So do you understand that measuring 12 at that location tells you right away certain things? It's not, it's not gonna be that. We have zero here all the time, is this particular scenario. One more. Short to ground where? Can't be a short to ground on the feed side, that blow the fuse. Short, which is called what? 
Says it. You can go. Short to, short to, short to ground on the control wire. Very good, Ray. Short, short to ground on the control, Can you get that from an open control wire. wire. An oh, that's a good question. An open control wire. Well, think about it. If you open that wire right there, 12 volts on this side will go through the coil. We'll have no voltage drop because no current flow from that open regardless. And we will have 12 here all the time. Yeah, for open control. Open so control. Is that a reason for the zero up top? Shorted yeah. control, not open. Oh, did I? Yeah, you wrote it down, Bert. That shouldn't be up there. What? Why did I write that? Probably because you changed the numbers or something. Because <laughs> at first. And open control was never a concern. That's right. I, I'm, I apologize. That, that shouldn't be up there at, at all. That was never, let, let's get rid of that. That was <laughs> never even part. Um, someone might have said open and I agreed and not thinking open, uh, shorted control. That, no wonder you guys were confused. My fault. So short to ground and control wire, open coil shorted driver or an open feed. We said the feed, we already handled that. Could we have a connection problem between... <laughs> Yeah. You could have a connection problem too. Think of Scott, Jim, think of the ECT sensor on Scott's car. Could we have an open connector right at the connector itself? Of course. Uh, putting that aside, what, how do we handle this? What's our next step? Fixed. Well, what? Fixed at zero volts right here. What's our next step? Follow my material and I tell you to do one of two things. Use a test light or an amp probe for the next step. I wanna know if there's current flow or not. If there's current flow, then I can eliminate one. If there's no current flow, I can eliminate two with one simple current measurement. Let's plug in what we did on this car. On this car, I also had an amp clamp connected. I don't know which wire I was on, whether it be the feed or the control. Amp, amp probe connected. And I had zero amps, regardless of what side I was on. What do I know that it's not on this car? In video number one. Shorted driver would cause current flow all the time. Short to ground in the control wire would cause current flow all the time. Do you see how quickly I was able to call a bad thermostat just by that alone. And now the intro to this, I said during the off period, during the off period would be up here, right? During the off period, we should have 12. If we have anything less than 12 during the off period, either the circuit's being turned on from a short to ground or shorted driver, or we have an open in the coil, period. Do you see how I know that right off the top of my head? And we said, it's not current flow. There was no current flow during this event. This was zero amps during that event. So what do we know? The only possible cause for that low voltage, because we verified the feed circuit was good. And, and in the field, if this is a car that comes in, this is a five minute diagnosis, if that. Once you understand circuit design, controls, plug this information into anything on the car. This is fun stuff here, I think. This is 70 bucks in five minutes stuff, right? If, if that doesn't sound good, I don't know what does. Five minute diagnosis, you hook up your stuff to the car, troubleshoot the thermostat. Okay, so the naysayers say, well, I could have just Google searched that and known my thermostat was bad. Okay, that's fine. But do you understand what we're learning here is fundamentals that apply to every single ground side switch circuit that's ever existed, whether it be on a car or not. I don't need Google and some other search database to figure out what everybody else is doing when I can troubleshoot it myself. Or I'm working in the driveway, you know, you're having a couple beers with your friend, he's having an issue with his car and you can help him out with your test light and a little bit of head knowledge. Any other questions on what we did on this electronic thermostat? It can be tested with a test light, right? If all you had was a test light, 
what would be my final check would be the feed side. Take, take my test light to battery ground and, and just make sure you have power on the, on the, on the feed side. All right? I don't need to show that, do I? That's no. basic check for a power feed. Yeah, Ray. Uh, because I, I have a bad habit of second guess in my show. Yes. The 12 volt side is the feed side and zero volt is the control side. Correct. Okay, just making sure because yep. he helped me answer yep. that. And it's not always 12 and zero. What you need to understand if we're calling this a control is at times it will be at zero with the switch closed. And at times with the switch open, it will go to 12. It's the side that changes. If you want kind of a, 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 a guideline to follow, the control wire would be the side that changes okay. in most circumstances. I'm thinking of a GDI fuel injector that the computer is controlling both sides. There's variables to everything, and I, I, we, don't need to, we don't need to go there right now. All right, cool. That's enough.